or if you have any disagreements with anything that was said, let's make it spicy. <laughs> to ensure that, again, not only that that taxpayer funds are spent efficiently, right, but we want to make sure that these funds are spent equitably as well. So that would be the difference. My lens would be through a lens of equity. Looking at budgets as moral documents. And something, I know you didn't ask me the question, you asked Kwanda, but I just wanted to add something really interesting to that, um, which is that Thomas DiNapoli has been the controller for almost 15 years, like since 2007. That's 15 years, right? Yeah. And that's a long time of sort of the same person being in that office. And something that I know is different with Kwanda, um, just from looking at the different platforms, is the focus on it, like she said, that she has, which is something that has been lacking in the previous years, and sort of that view of funding institutions that aren't enabling the top 1% to continue doing what they're doing. For example, one of the stories that broke out recently was that our pension fund was recently invested in Black Blackstone Group, which is a huge, huge issue when it comes to equity. Um, and sort of seeing who's at the top of those corporations and why is our pension fund being invested in those groups. That, that's really, really fascinating to see. So I think we definitely need a change of pace after 15 years of the same person. And I don't know if this is the right question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What would you do to the schools? Again, you know, just ensuring that when we conduct these audits, it's through a lens of equity. Okay. Who's getting the state contracts? You know, how familiar are they with the populations in these particular areas? Right? Just really making sure that the state's resources are spent uh, efficiently and, and intentionally. And in order, again, to do that, we have to start looking at things through a lens of equity. Right? And you know why are I would like to you know change the way the public schools are funded because we've had the same areas with the same low-performing schools and they all are poorly funded. So now that we know that better funded schools lead to better educational outcomes, we need to start shifting resources in a way that sort of makes sense. So again, our most vulnerable get the uh, assistance and the support that they need early on in life. Hi, Quanta. Uh, equity is a charged word. Can you give me a simple definition and tell me what you think it, it most would be to have It's a heavy word, equity. So, it, it is actually what I, so what I mean through a lens of equity, meaning that, you know, my focus would be on the most vulnerable. That's what I'm focused on. If we're going to have equal government, and we're, it's, I've always said it has been so irresponsible to leave so many students behind. When we talk about food deserts or recreational deserts, this state has the resources to support our most vulnerable so they become assets to society and not liabilities to the system that over time puts a strain on the system that we have, which is where we are at this, at, at this very moment. There's a strain on the system. Any other questions? Thank <laughs> you. 
How, uh, again, uh, and we have to look at these budgets through a lens of, of equity, because when we talk about allocating, you know, it, who's the focus? And right now, the focus is always been sort of top bottom, top bottom trickle down economics. And we have to now change that and now focus our re focus our our resources on the individuals and the residents that need it most. Our most vulnerable populations are in 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 sort of dire need of just their basic needs. As Mark talked about, you know, we've had the same food deserts for 50 or 60 years. And what has been consistent is the policies We've had policy violence for decades, and now we're at this moment where we can physically see the residual effects of decades of policy violence. And I'm not okay with sitting back and allowing another generation to fall victim to that. Policies that were in place before they came out of the womb based on their zip code the deck was stacked, stacked against them. And, 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 and I know that firsthand how the deck can be stacked against you. And if you don't understand that, it's like you, 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 have a, you, 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 you feel like you have a choice, right? You can, like Mark said, right, you can go to the military, right? That's a choice. That means someone presented the military to you. Someone presented these valuable options. But we have some communities where you know, some students are not even introduced to certain professions. So they don't, they may be great at being an accountant, but they have, you know, accounting may be a great profession for them. But because they weren't introduced in, in, to the profession in a way that makes sense, they're sort of, um, sort of locked into this, I can be a basketball player or I can be, you know, something that doesn't, that doesn't allow me to utilize my brain, but it allows me to utilize my physicality. And right now, that's sort of um, at jeopardy, because again, you know, they don't have access to proper nutrition. But when we talk about these offices and equity, you realize that these same policies have been around for decades, right? When we talk about equity in education, the, you know, the, there were mayors 200 years ago with the same line with the same focus. And it's like, if we haven't solved these problems, if we're still talking about the same issues that we talked about 200 years ago, it's time to go in a different direction. And, and I am willing to take that step forward. I'm willing to be fearless and step into these spaces that weren't created for me so the next generation can have a chance. And I'm willing to speak their language so they understand that I'm here because I'm advocating for you. I'm here to take a couple for the team because you know my family and I we have we've taken a couple for the team. This has not been a difficult, uh, an easy process. As I've said to them, the NAACP filed objections to my petition. I'm the only black woman in history to seek the office of the New York State Controller, and to have that organization file petitions and objections to me being in the Democratic primary to oppose one person that has done nothing for marginalized communities in this state, I have to ask the question, right? Do your goals still align with your mission? Yes. So I have a question for you. So when I see that you are proposing 